for that. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. As we all take our seats, we praise God for that. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need God to be with us all the time. So anyway, I'll go back to the message we have here today. Uh, um, the message was that so that we, 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 we multiply. I mean, we, we use whatever God has given us so we can be able to move to another level. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I like you, the example he, he gave that when you were at school, maybe you just studied when you are knowing that the exam is tomorrow, you see you, you, you study very hard in the evening. But actually what you are doing, you are not studying. You, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are craving. Praise God. Amen. So that he, you see, when things come, then you, you sort of like reproduce what you've been reading. Praise God. Amen. Now, but you see, if you understand now, if you are at university level, now there is another level which you'll be studying at. Praise God. Now, so people at the university level, they don't, they don't reproduce what they've been given. But they need to come up with concept from what they are studying. Amen. You see? Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. So if you come up with a concept, then it means the next time you, you are not going to claim, but you are using the knowledge you have yeah. to be able to solve a situation, whatever it is. Right. So same with worshiping God. It's the same. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So let's not just uh, reproduce to God what he has given us. To say, God, whatever you taught us that time, that's exactly what you're giving you back. Yeah. Look, God, I, I observed all what you said. And here I am. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I'm giving you back to you. No, it needs to come up with the fruit. Praise God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now today I'm going to teach about uh, um, something which is very important in our worshiping of God. Praise God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Now, we are going to teach about first thoughts today, but I need you to understand from other, uh, another perspective so that we know, because you see, if we claim things, it's difficult. When you claim things, then it means you are going just to reproduce whatever you, you claim. But if you understand the concept, then it means if a similar situation arises in, in, in future, you're going to use the concept. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, now, let's see, understand this now. I'm going to use um, the Bible from the book of uh, Genesis. And I'm going to use the Bible from the book of uh, Leviticus. And I'm going to use the Bible from the book of uh, Deuteronomy. Praise God. Amen. Now, we need to understand that he, now God has got a purpose why he created people. And uh, that purpose is the one which we need to make sure that we will fulfill. Praise God. Amen. So it's that purpose which we need to fulfill. Now, if we don't fulfill that purpose, it means uh, we have not lived to our potential. We have not uh, actually used what we have to, to, to raise up ourselves to the potential which God has created us for. Praise God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now, so I want to talk today about the first fruit. But I want you to understand from a different perspective. Now, first fruit is not a church doctrine. Neither is it a church teaching or anything, but it is from God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now, but let's understand the Bible from the book of Genesis. So we're going to read the Bible from the book of Genesis, and I want us to read where Adam actually violated whatever God had said it, it was for God. So if you read the Bible from the book of uh, Genesis chapter number 2. So, if you read the Bible from the book of uh, chap uh, chapter 2 of Genesis, verse 17. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. 
Okay, thank you. I just want verse 17. Now, so we understand the Bible now from the book of uh, Genesis. Now, so the book of Genesis explains from the beginning. So God was now talking to Adam after he created him. He said, now, I've given you everything else, but I don't, you, I don't want you to touch the fruit in the garden of, a certain fruit in the garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Because today I want you to get something out of this. Now, so the Bible teaches us that he, when God was speaking to uh, Adam, he told him that you should not eat that fruit. Now, and other translation, they will say that he, you surely die the same day you eat. So I believe, I think it's good news. It will tell you that he, um, if you eat that fruit, you die the same, the same day. So I need us to read um, chapter 2, verse 17 of Genesis. So if you can read that one, so we can understand or understand what the Bible says. So the same verse, but in good news. Except. of what is good and what is bad. You must not eat the fruit of that tree. If you do, you will die the same day. You see? So time frame. So if you eat that fruit, you will die when? <laughs> the same day. So, so if, you, if you eat that fruit, you will die the same day. So, so the Bible is teaching us now. I, I think I, I wrote an article. You all want to read it. But uh, I want us to understand this. Now, so God is giving us um, that what we need to do and what we don't need to do. From the beginning of the Bible, right from the start. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible is teaching us that God told Adam that you should not touch that fruit. Because the moment you touch or the moment you eat that, uh, that fruit, on the same day you are going to die. Now, we understand that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So which means what God has said from the beginning, it prevails forever and ever. Amen. You see, I like the Bible, it says that Jesus, in the book of Matthew, he said, I've come to fulfill the law, not to abolish. Praise, praise God. Amen. So which means whatever Jesus came to do, he set the path straight from the beginning. He said, I've not come to, to abolish, but I've come to fulfill. Let's go say, I've come to what? Fulfill. I've come to fulfill. So when Jesus came, his, he, his intention was not to abolish, but his intention was to fulfill. Hence, he then says, now, you need to repent for the kingdom of God is near. Because he was saying that whatever God has said to you, you people have left the ways. Whatever God has said, but you people have left the ways. Hence, he says, repent for the kingdom of God is what? Near. It's near. Oh, Hallelujah. Now, so we understand that, if you keep on reading, we understand that when Adam ate the fruit, he was not then able to stand before God at the same time. So which means something had surely died, Amen. according to what God had promised. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and whatever he says, he fulfills. Amen. So God fulfilled, I mean, whatever he had said. If you touch this fruit, the day you touch it is the same day you what? The same day you touch, that's the same day you? Die. Praise God. Now, so if you understand now the book of uh, Leviticus chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible says, now, you need to make sure that uh, you observe the things of God. Make sure that you distinguish what is for God's use and what is for general use. So are you getting the line now? Amen. That is not a question of God says this, God says that. No, no, no. But it's a concept. So God says, now you must distinguish what is for God's use and what is for general use. That's Leviticus chapter 10, verse 10. You need to distinguish what is for God's use and what is for what? What's for general use? So whoever a person is a true Christian, we need to make sure, open his eyes when he's walking, and see what is for God's use and what is for general use. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And I like the apostle. He said, setting apart. That's how he explains it. He said, he said from the beginning, God, he, God actually set a principle of setting apart. So meaning that there are some things for God and something which you can use generally. 
So the Bible from the book of Leviticus, chapter 10, verse 10 says, Now, you must distinguish what is for God's use and what is for general use. Oh, praise God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now, so we understand from the beginning that when Adam touched the fruit, which from the, right from the beginning, right from the beginning, which God has said, do not touch. And God promised death on the same time. And that's exactly what was fulfilled because we understand that he, when he did that, he was not able to commune with God. The Bible teaches us that after doing that, God visited in the same way he used to visit. And he said he wanted to communicate with Adam as he used to do. But Adam, because something had died in his life, because something had died according to the promise of God. You see, so when God promises, God fulfills. When God says something, God will surely, there's no word of God who shall come back without nothing, without anything. You see, so God will fulfill whatever he says. So if you touch this fruit, you will die. And we understand that the only change which happened between Adam and God, their interactions, is that he was not able to stand before God. So God was then asking that, is it that you have eaten that fruit? Because he knew that he would die, certainly. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we need to understand that there are some things which we can touch, and there are some other things which we cannot touch when we worship God. So worshiping God is not about coming to church every Sunday. Worshiping God is not about only meeting people. Worshiping God is not a group of people meeting together, trying to please each other. But no, 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 no. Worshiping God is about setting, uh, making sure that we follow the principles of God. Amen. And we make sure that we fulfill whatever God says. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now, so, so if you understand the Bible now, you understand that God then says, when you come to a place I'm going to give you, or when you arrive to a place I'm going to give you, you need to make sure that you take the first fruit of your harvest and you bring them to me. So if you look at it, it's the same principle. It's the same principle. It's, a, it's like it's not for anyone to use, but it's for God to use. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So if you read for us from the book of Leviticus, chapter 29, chapter 24, verse 9. Uh, sorry, uh, it should be 23 then. Let me just get the 23 verse 9, yeah. 23 verse 9. So 23 verse 9, please. When you come into the land yes. that the Lord is giving you, yes. and you have it, your corn, yeah. take the first sheep to the priest. He shall present it as a special offering to the Lord so that you may be accepted. The priest shall present it the day after the Sabbath. On the day you present the offering of corn, also sacrifice as a bench offering, a one-year-old male lamb that is not defect. Okay, verse 14. Do not eat any of the new corn, whether raw, roasted, or bent into bread, until you have brought this offering to God. This regulation is to be observed by all descendants for all time to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, that's, that's the main, main focus of what we'll be talking about today. The other ones which we read were obviously just the baking. But uh, this is the main topic we are going to talk about today. And then we shall also uh, read um, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 2. Anyway, before we read that one. Anyway, so we sh let, let's just bow our heads as I pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Father, we thank you today. And we pray, Father God, that uh, this word, Father, shall help your children to understand. I pray, Father God, that you shall give us the understanding of this word. And Father shall give us the words to say in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, so we understand now, um, 
that where God says, now when you arrive to a place I am giving you, when you arrive to the place I am going to give you, I need you to take the first fruits of whatever you are going to harvest. And I need you to bring in the presence of the priest. Now, you know, one of our chairmen was very concerned about this. And he said, so how, how, what are we going to do ourselves? Because the Bible here says the priest. So, which means we are disadvantaged ourselves. Because we don't have a priest. And listen, I'm talking about someone who was so much concerned. Uh, so much concerned to the fact that he actually had to come and, 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 and ask about this. So how about us? We do not have a priest. How are we going to do it? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But anyway, the answer is there. We, we, we gave him the answer anyway. But we need to understand that it's very, very important to do according to what God says. So God says now we need to make sure that we come with the first fruits and then we present them because they are for God. Now, remember, you see, the last verse which was read, the Bible says, now, do not eat any corn. <laughs> do not eat any corn, whether roasted or raw, before this offering. You see, so it means that God here is still maintaining his principle. He's saying that this should not be done, because once you do that, you are invading in God's property now. You are violating the things of God now. You, this, is more than, this is more than just sinning, but you are violating the things of God. Because listen, when Adam sinned before God, when Adam violated the things of God, it was not any other commandments, but it was a principle of setting apart which he violated. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. So now, the Bible here is teaching us that, now, before you eat any corn, in other words, before you eat any money, or you spend any money, in other words, before you spend any money, you need to make sure that you fulfill whatever God has said. No, no, because the, the problem is that these things, they've got some consequences with them. Praise God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Because Adam was promised death and death prevailed. Yeah? 